Alright, so it is September 23rd, 2021. We're here at the garden and we're going to harvest beets today. We've already started and also Lene and Charles have been working at weeding and uh, layering some fresh mulch on the pathways there, you can see. So getting it ready for next year. Anyway, so we've pulled up this whole row of winter keeper beets all the way down there. But we are cutting the tops off and then also cutting off the little tails so they look like this and then we're kind of letting them I guess just dry a bit in the sun and the wind it's pretty windy today it's actually like plus 12 not the warmest but here we have them in piles and then we'll come through and we'll sort them uh, the big ones and the really small ones and maybe medium ones and last year we saved the really small ones but we're not going to do that this year because it was just too much of a hassle going through all the baby ones and then layering them the way we do, which we will show you, so stay tuned to see how we uh, keep these for up to two years. So we'll show you how to do that in a little bit. The small ones, we'll either give them away to some friends or we will um, give them to the chickens. So we crush them up and give it to the chickens and that's... What better food can chickens ask for, hey? Hello, mama dog. You are very heavy with puppy. You can have your puppies any day. There's one of my honeybees. You can see the pollen on its legs. Isn't that sweet? Beautiful cornflowers or bachelor buttons. Now it's time to show you how we store our beets and you can store them for up to two years in peat moss. So the most important thing when doing this method, when we use it for all of our root vegetables with the exception of potatoes, um, carrots, rutabagas, uh, parsnips, all those, the most important thing to keep in mind is that they're not touching. And so you just keep a space between each Individual. vegetable and then you layer peat moss on top of that and you just do layer peat moss beets layer peat moss beets and simple. you just keep going up and up and up that's a big guy there I'll good put a little more in between there, and now we just pour peat moss on top of that. The nice thing with peat moss is that you can reuse it year after year after year. Or, and the reason why you keep the vegetables separated is so that if one goes bad, it does not transfer to the other vegetables. Yeah, and then what we'll do is we will put this into cold storage um, in our root cellar, our buried sea can. Our root cellar will stay about plus four, even when it's like minus 40 out. Yeah. And if it gets 45. too cold in, in the root cellar, then we uh, just light a candle. Or and a couple candle, candles. Yep, a candle yep. or two, and it helps just keep the temperature at the right spot. We even had one of these tubs full of carrots um, left in the sea can, and it got pr so hot this summer that the sea can also heated up to like 20, wasn't it? Plus yep. 20 Celsius. Plus 20. And the carrots were still good. Well, it was were. amazing. A year later, at mm. plus 20 for like a couple weeks. Oh, so, that's okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it this this method we've been using for a number of years now and we're very, very happy with it. And then you end with a final layer of peat moss at the very top. And then you put your lid on and we like to keep our lids cracked open because lots of condensation does build yeah, up it'll underneath. Build, build on the lid and then there'll be droplets on top. Yes, and then it'll drip down and it'll make the peat moss wet and it can make your stuff mold, so it is good to have um the lid's cracked open or kind of halfway open or something. So here is our sea can. The entrance is facing east and <laughs> it's a buried sea can, obviously. 
Um, there's three rooms inside. Here we are. So there's the walkway here, and then there's a little buffer room before this room. And at the moment, it's about 12 in here. 11 or 12. And then there's this room. You can see we already have a bunch of cabbages in here, which they are doing pretty good, although it's not as cold as it should be. It should be around like four or five. And it is nine. Nine and a half. So we'll put our carrots and beets tubs in there. And this is where we store the potatoes with the apples, although we don't have apples this year. Well, not, not enough to store, that is, unless we buy some from BC. So let's see here. Uh huh, here comes Lene. She is bearing gifts of uh, baby beets. So we got to bring in all the beets and then the rutabagas and turnips. You see the condensation here on the lid? Mm -hmm. That's because the lid wasn't cracked. Pretty soon, this room will be overflowing with more cabbages and carrots, and more beets and more rutabagas and more turnips. What else? Squashes, of course. And then potatoes. And who knows, maybe even dry cured sausage. Yum. Do we ever love that? Well, that's it for this video, folks. So let us know what you like to do for um, harvesting and preserving your produce and your beautiful bountiful harvest that God has blessed you with and hope to hear from you in the comments below. Take care! So it being the third day of Sukkot today, here is our little suka, our lean-to out here in the windbreak and look at that picture and all of us children fit very comfortably in here. Get to sleep out here for at least a week. Who knows, it might even be longer because we'll like it so much. Let's just mold the truck tarp. Works really good. The wind won't blow it away and it'll keep us dry. And over here, the hawthorn berries are in full fruit. Although we don't have actually a whole lot of hawthorns this year. Beautiful colors out here. Here's some. They're so good. They're like little apples. Kind of like uh, rose hips, but uh, like apple more. Hawthorn berries are so good for strengthening and healing the heart, both physically and emotionally. They are very supportive, so much so that pharmaceuticals still use hawthorn berry for treating heart conditions of all kinds. We just love eating them and making them into butter or jam. And they have seeds in them, very hard seeds. Generally, there's around four. And the trees have huge thorns. Look at that. Very, very prickly. They're almost too dangerous to even use as toothpicks. They're best after a frost, but we haven't had a frost up here, and they're still super good. <laughs>